What's up, guys? Coach B here. Want to do a quick update on ATER. Um, I don't know if you caught the video that I put out on Wednesday. I was pretty excited about uh, the potential for not only a short squeeze, but also a gamma squeeze uh, with all the numbers we were looking at. And while those numbers still look great and, you know, there may still be a squeeze in the works for ATER, um, I did say in that video that if the stock broke below nine, I was going to exit. And that's exactly what happened. My stop loss went off at eight ninety five, dollars um, you know, for the shares that I had purchased. And I also, uh, you know, the options contracts that I was in, I ended up cutting those for a loss, too. And I'll go ahead and pull up um, what we kind of saw on the daily chart um, transpire since then as well. But uh, so here we go. This was a uh, pre-market Wednesday, which is exactly when I kind of put that video out, um, was back here. We actually did see it kind of get up to, uh, you know, 988, and then it was all downhill from there. Nice little spike up Wednesday morning, and it kind of lost support here right after $9. Uh, like I said, I got stopped out at about 895, um, and I was waiting for really – for the stock to show a little bit of strength and reverse so that I can get back in. And that never really happened throughout the day. As you can see, it's just been kind of driven lower and lower and even lower today, hitting down as low as 766. Um, you know, max pain on the week, or I should say next week, because the options expiration is next week is $10. Um, and I would imagine that market makers are going to try to pin this stock somewhere in between you know 750 and 10 unless that max pain number uh, changes but what well, what got me so excited about this in the first place was first off the short interest which there's a couple other stocks out there you know ATER's float is roughly about 35 million i believe and if we look at ortex data right now we could see that you know coming into today uh short interest was about 40 percent cost to borrow 129 utilization at 97 um, you know, a little bit of a change in the short interest is showing up as 34% now cost to borrow on average is a hundred percent. So those numbers still look good. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying a squeeze is off the table or anything like that, but for me, um, the other thing that I was really excited about was the options chain. Taking a look at the options chain here for ATER for next week on October 5th, we're looking at, uh, you know, 13,000 contracts at the ten dollar strike outweighing nine thousand puts we'd like to see these be a little bit higher but then when you get over to 1250 13 thousand outweighing four thousand um you know over here at the fifteen dollar twenty one thousand outweighing two and you know relative to the float size of this stock at the time um when i made this video on wednesday we were sitting right around 980 if it would have pushed above 10 um, there really would have been enough power in here to kind of move this thing, I think, potentially all the way at least to 20, but potentially all the way through the option chain to 35. Can that still happen? Yes. Um, however, we've seen this play out with so many other stocks, and I mentioned it in the previous video. And if you catch me on the live streams every morning, I talk about it, too. When IV implied volatility gets this high you know, 200%, sometimes 250%, 300% way up there. It becomes, that's more incentive for market makers to really control and manipulate the stock to pin it down and make money off all the puts and off all the calls because premiums are going for a lot more. So, um, again, the gamma squeeze potential is still there on this stock. Um, but right now it's kind of in that mode where it's being controlled it's being pushed down further. I'm not a buyer right now. Um, I did exit um, shortly after getting in. I mean, it, that that play probably only lasted about a half hour. But I also said that I would put out an update video, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to keep my eyes on this stock, um, you know, and, and if any time before Friday I start to see that, you know, it's gaining strength, gaining momentum, um, I would much rather be a buyer closer to 10 and you know potentially move out move, miss out on this two dollar and 25 cent move that it could have from here to 10 because i think crossing 10 is where the bigger moves at um you know and i definitely don't want to be holding and seeing this thing fall even further down so 
that's it for me. If you subscribe to the channel, um, I have been sending out messages to, uh, you know, on the community about some of these plays, like when I got stopped out the other day. Um, and I'll definitely put something back on there on when I'm going to enter in. I've also been sending a couple updates here and there on the Discord. There's a link down below um, if you're interested in joining that. And uh, also come check me out in the mornings. Every morning the market's open. I'm usually uh, streaming in pre-market, looking for runners on the day, talking about some of my plays and just talking stocks. OK, so uh, come check us out if you're available. I know it's early. It's pretty early for me, too. I'm on the West Coast. I start at 5 a.m., um, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Hope to see you there.